Welcome to Chapter 3 of my CCNA Security Version 2 Lecture Review. Chapter 3 is about authentication, authorization, and accounting. This chapter is broken down into six major sections. An intro, purpose of AAA, local AAA authentication, server-based AAA, server-based AAA authentication, server-based authorization, and accounting. So notice 3, 4, and 3, 5... Here we're separating authentication and authorization and accounting into two different sections. And the last group is going to be a summary. So, okay, jump right in. What is the purpose of AAA? So, upon completion of this section, you should be able to explain why AAA is critical to network security and describe the characteristics of AAA. AAA overview. So, you can have local accounts on a device. Here we have a VTY. We're setting a password for login. But the issue is Telnet is vulnerable to brute force attacks. So having local passwords like that may not be a good option. SSH and local da uh, database methods are a way to combat this. Because with SSH and a local database method, you have a username and a password as opposed to just a password. So with this said, with SSH, you need typically a domain name. You will need to generate an RSA. It doesn't have to be RSA. You have to generate a key pair. In this example, it is an RSA key pair. You need to be setting up a user and the appropriate password for that user. And then after you do that, we can be even more secure. Here we have line VTY. Notice transport input, we are limiting it to just SSH, so no longer allowing telnets, and we are doing a login local. The login local tells the device that the local AAA database, well, is local. So, the major components, authentication. Who are you? How can we verify you are you? Authorization. Once we've verified you, what are you able to do? And accounting is more of the accountability of actions. Here we have a bank statement. I normally like to use a, uh, an ATM mentality. You go to an ATM. You have a debit card and a PIN number. That verifies who you are. Once you've successfully logged into the ATM, what are you authorized to do? Are you authorized to withdraw $400 cash? Maybe you have a limit of $300 cash, so the authorization for $400 will fail. That's because you're only authorized to do a certain action or up to a certain action. In this case, withdrawal $300 maximum, and so that's all you're able to do and then it's accounted by once you debited the $300 it actually subtracts it from your account. Moving past this we have our AAA characteristics. We can do a local AAA authentication or we could do a server-based authentication. Local would be local to the device server-based would be some type of an additional server that it would pass on. Very commonly on school campuses, you may have a campus-wide wireless, and in order to get on the wireless, you have to provide credentials. Not so much a key, but a username and password. That's this similar authentication mode as server-based, because it should be linked together. And we're going to talk more about that when we get into Radius and TACAX. AAA authentication, sorry, AAA authorization does perform a process against a server. So when a user is authenticated, a session is established with the AAA server. The router should request authorization for requested services. Basically, what can I do? The server should get the response and then will pass a, 
a pass or fail response back to the perimeter router based off of the action that you're allowed to do. Are you allowed to access level 7 um, access or above, for example? The AAA authorization should either allow you or not allow you based off of the pass or fail of the authorization. Accounting. Basically, for accounting information, in this regard, we are looking at what access the resources, what commands, what system access, what exec uh, resources, what connections, what network connectivity are you allowed. So once you've been authenticated, everything that you do should generate a start message and essentially will log what you do for accountability later down the line. Moving on, we have 3.2. Since we did say that you could have either local authentication or server-based authentication, we're going to talk about serv sorry, we're going to talk about local authentication first before we talk about server-based. So with that said, this chapter you should understand how to configure AAA authentication using CLI. And we will also look at troubleshooting AAA authentication that validates those users against that, again, that local database. Again, this section is about local AAA. Beginning one is configuring AAA with CLI, via the CLI. So one of the things that you have to do is add users and passwords to the local router's database. You need to enable global, globally AAA, configure AAA, and then test and troubleshoot the configuration if necessary. So how do you do this? Well, I'm going to work backwards. Normally when I do this, I already have a user set up. Just in case, if you don't, uh, you may want to set up users first. I normally always start with doing a AAA. I always set up a new configuration. Here we have AAA new model. And then we are setting up the authentication logins to a local example. Hence the AAA authentication login default local. After that, I will go through the appropriate users that I need and I will add them. I will also make sure to do secret passwords, documenting the passwords as necessary. Though, keep in mind, you may need to keep those passwords secure if you are writing them down or documenting them outside of the router configuration. So, now let's look at the different method types. Here we have the example AAA authentication login. We can do a list name and we can do multiple methods. Methods could be enable. Again, this will use the enable password for authentication. We could do a local this is a local username database. We can also do what's called a case sensitive local. That would be local hyphen case. We could do no authentication. We could do groups based off of radius or TACX, TACX plus. Or we could do group based off of group names. And the use of a subset of radius or TACX servers for authentication as defined by a new command, which would be AAA group server radius or AAA group server tac x. Okay, moving back to what we started with, with that AAA authentication login, the default option will use the listed authentication method following the keyword as the default list. Hence why we covered the method types First, we have a list name, which is a character string used by the name of list authentication methods active when a user logs in. And again, we have multiple methods. These methods will be identified or will identify the list of methods that the AAA authentication process will query in the order they will query in a given sequence. There always has to be at least one method that must be specified, but you can do a maximum of four. You can do whichever option you want, and then the fourth method is as none. 
that's not the best way of doing this, but that is an example. Alright, so let's go ahead and let's try to put this in action. So if we are doing a local AAA, here we have two new users, junior admin and admin. We have a new model. We have AAA authentication, login, default, local case, enable, which that means what? Login, default, that's case one, or method one, login, local case, that's another, enable, that's another. We could do um, SSH login, and that would be a named, and we can do a local case. Or again, local case is the method. Login default, that's the method. Let me step back one screen, actually. I want to make sure that we thoroughly get this. Again, enable uses the in, enable uh, password for authentication. Local, local case uses the local database. Local case will be the local database, but more secure. I wanted to cover those ones specifically. Again, AAA authentication login default list name. Then after that, the methods. So you can list default or a list name. So I'm going to go back to slide 16. I actually want to get my pin out. Bear with me one minute. Login, default, method one, method two, list, method one. And then we're configuring it. We did our line VTY, login authentication, and then we called our list. So you can have multiple authentication models. This is the w method that's going to be called because it's going to be calling that list name. Again, the syntax for fine tuning the authentication. If we're looking at the command syntax first, we could do AAA login authentication attempts max fails. You can set the number of unsuccessful attempts. And the number of unsuccessful attempts are again the number of unsuccessful authentication attempts before the connection is dropped and the user account is locked. If you want to check out what accounts are locked, you could do a show AAA local user lockout and it'll show the user and lock time. If you want to see the unique ID for a session, you can do show AAA sessions though I would get more familiar with the show AAA and go through all of those subcommands for troubleshooting. As we brought up troubleshooting, our next section is troubleshooting local AAA authentication. You can always do a debug AAA and you can always do additional subcommands underneath the AAA. The issue is understanding the debug outputs. It is not going to be the easiest for new users to get defined. Typically, this is going to be something that you learn with time. Here you're looking at things such as methods. That's going to be the list. You could also be looking for things as the lists for being able to pull the data. List here would be the default list. Method would be the method it's calling, and so forth. Moving on to section 3.3, server-based AAA. Here we're looking at the benefits of server-based AAA, and we're going to compare and contrast Radius and TACAX authentication protocols. All right, so let's get into server-based characteristics. So a local authentication is where the user establishes a connection with the router. The router will prompt the user for the username and password and authenticate it based off of the local database. 
The issue with that is everything will be stored locally on that database. But what happens when you want multiple resources to be able uh, to be unified? For example, you may want uh, not just router access, you may want to tie in computer access, wireless access, and additional. Server base is going to be that option. So in server base, the user will establish a connection to the router. The router will prompt the username, uh, the user for a username and password. The router will then pass that credentials to a secure device, normally something running like Cisco Secure, uh, whether it be a server or an engine or a domain name service. Sorry, not domain name service. It's about some type of directory service for verification. Here we're looking at Cisco's ACS. So the Cisco should secure the ACS, will it authenticate the user. Here the ACS is going to be the directory service. So again, user will prompt the router. The router will prompt the user for a username and password. The router will forward that to a Cisco ACS and then the ACS will respond with an approved met a method or not to the user, thus authenticating them or not. The connection between the router and the directory services can use one of two protocols, RADIUS or TACAX+. So this is going to be how the router will communicate with the directory services or secured service servers. So server-based AAA communication protocols, clever way of saying TACAX versus RADIUS. Functionality, basically RADIUS will combine authentication and authorization, but they'll separate accounting, where TACAX will separate AAA according to the AAA architect, allowing modularity of the security services as they're implemented. Basically, you can separate all of them where RADIUS only authorization and authentication are combined and it separates out accounting. That may be great for some, not great for others. So who uses which protocol? TACAX is predominantly Cisco. RADIUS is pretty much everything else. If you are trying to connect through a directory service that's not Cisco, you're using RADIUS. Transport protocols. TACAX uses TCP, connection oriented, where RADIUS is connectionless oriented, also known as UDP. What type of encryption methodology for verification is used? TACAX uses bidirectional challenging and response as used in CHAP, where RADIUS will use an unidirectional challenge response from the RADIUS secret server to the RADIUS client. CHAP is not the most secured, so keep that in mind. Protocol support. TACAX does have way more protocol support, where RADIUS does not allow for ARA or NetBio buoy where when we talk about confidentiality the TACAX will encrypt the entire packet where RADIUS will only encrypt the password. Pros and cons for both of those as well. I've done other videos about whole packet encryption as opposed to just payload encryption so I'm not going to go that in depth here with that component so keep that in mind. Customization TACAX does have a little bit more customizable features. Provides author, uh, authorization of router commands on a per user or per group basis, where RADIUS has no option for authorizing router commands on either user or group basis. However, TACAX, the accounting or features are more limited, where RADIUS, they are very extensive. So RADIUS has way more functionality in the accounting portion. So again, pros and cons. However, in the field that I've spent most of my life in, RADIUS is the more common protocol, especially when you are dealing with authentication servers. That is 
a Windows domain, for example, which is very common. So let's go ahead and look at authentication process. Since, uh, since Stack Axe was first, here we have the 12 step process. Connect, user prompt, the, ax uh, the uh, access server will respond with username. The router will forward that to the client. The client will have to respond with the username. The router will then forward that on to the ACS. The ACS will also be asking if it's a should be a prompt for a password. That should be done by the router. The ACS should then also say, hey, I need a password. We'll forward that back onto the client. The client will send the has uh should send the password in a hashed format. The router will send that hash to the ACS. The ACS should accept or reject it. The router should receive the accept or reject, then allow the client based off of that result. 12 steps. There's a lot of issues with that. A lot of overhead, a lot of resource wasting. Radius, on the other hand, is a six step process. Router should prompt the client never forwarding it to the ACS yet. The router should receive the username, should prompt for the password, and only once it has a username and password will forward that to the ACS, and the ACS should grant access, or may reject access based off the username and password that is sent. So again, between the router and the access servers, what is being used to secure that connection will either be TACAX or RADIUS. And those are gonna be the primary protocols that communicating between the router and directory service. If it is RADIUS, you can actually use Microsoft Windows Server uh, features like Network, uh, network Protection Services, also known as the newer version of IAS. So you can actually start integrating more, sorry, other vendor technology here. Because Windows uh, Network Services is actually fairly large, the ability to integrate Cisco authentication technology with Windows is growing. Hence the Active Directory integration. Moving on is section 3.4 server based uh, AAA authentication. Based uh, on this material, you should be able to configure server based authentication basically uh, from the CLI and you should be able to troubleshoot it. Now that we have, have a basic understanding of the characteristics that are used. So it's always really funny, right? When I do this and I go into a new environment, so many organizations refuse to integrate different technologies. Say we're talking server-based AAA authentication. And my background is both Cisco and Microsoft, so I actually hold several certifications in both. But what's amazing is the organizations that I work with, they like to keep those technology separate. But it's like if you're integrating technology uh, wireless, for example, you can have it authenticate against Active Directory, which almost every business uses. And yet that fails to happen. And I think, honestly, a big part of that is just lazy uh, individuals or uneducated individuals. Anywho, let's get right back into our main topic of this is configuring AAA via CLI for those Cisco devices. All right, so just uh, like previous, turn on AAA. Here we're not setting up local users because we're connecting to a server with that. So with that, we have to specify the IP address of that server. We also have to set up a secret share to authenticate back and forth to verify that we're connecting to the appropriate server. 
And then we need to configure authentication to use either the radius protocol or TACAX protocol. So, how do we do that? If we're sitting at a CLI in, in a config mode, we're doing AAA hyphen new model that sets up our new server. Next, if we are doing TACAX, it'll be TACAX server, name the server. With that, it'll give us a subset of commands. We can do our address. We could do our, here we're doing a single connection. We set our key and we're good to go. If we want to do that to a radius server, we do that slightly different. We actually go a new AAA model. We do a radius server. We name the server. We will be put into a sub command there. So we will do an address. Typically, if you're doing IPv4, it'd be the IPv4 address. If it's IPv6, you'd be doing the IPv6 address. So that part you can kind of modify. Next, we're going to be separating separating out two different common ports, authentication port, the auth port, and then the accounting port. They should be different ports based off of your radius server. Next, you're setting up your shared key. So again, a few different commands. How do you configure the authentication to use AAA server? So here we're setting up AAA authentication, login, default, space. You can actually do different options. You can notice you can do groups. So AAA authentication, login, default, group. You can now list the server group name. LDAP is also an option. So it's not just radius and tack acts because you can integrate LDAP in here as well. So how do we do this side by side? The second set of commands, again, you notice that we set up server T, we set up server R, we're setting up the AAA authentication, so we do our AAA authentication, login, default, group. Here we're doing our TAC X, but we can also do a secondary group for radius, and just in case, we can also predefine a third method for local case. Because in earlier slides, we talked about we can have up to four methods. Here, we can do, here we're using three, group tack axe, group radius, and method three of that local case. So again, just in case one doesn't go through, we get another option, and we get a third option just in case. What happens when this doesn't work? We have to know how to troubleshoot it. That means we have to understand the debug and show commands for the appropriate, with the appropriate op uh, options that we're dealing with. Debug AAA authentication. We can be looking at the methods. We could be looking at the appropriate auth and packets, seeing what's being responded. Are those responses actually pa the past response or not when we're shooting trouble up uh, when we're troubleshooting radius you can debug radius and you can also look at accounting authorization brief you can do e-logs local servers uh, retransmit so you can look at the re retransmission of packets if you're looking at tacax again debug tacax and here you can only really do e each of the A's, events, and packets. So again, troubleshooting radius, you get a little bit more options. And again, radius se doesn't separate authentication and authorization. So keep that in mind. So troubleshooting with radius, I feel a little bit easier, but everyone's going to be slightly different. Definitely get in and test these debug commands they help. The more time that you understand what these protocols do, the easier it is to troubleshoot with them. So again, here's an example of debug TACAX. It will show us the access control debug it should be on. It should show us the opening and sending and receiving connections. 
It should give us the appropriate responses for users, for their path status, for the through a handshake connecting to the TACAC server, because again, it's TCP. It should also, uh, when it's looking at authentication, if it's path or if it fails, notice here, this option is pass, this option is fail, and then notice it does close the through a handshake after the authentication response status has been received. So again, learning these debug options helps a lot. Sadly, we don't have slides for radius debugging, but we have labs that are going to cover this material in depth, so definitely get in the do those labs as soon as you can. Moving on, we have our section 3.5, server race AAA, and accounting. When you're done with this, you should know how to configure AAA auth authorization, accounting, and my favorite, we're going to cover 802.1x components again, just in case. I say again because when you cover the CCNA material, you should have already talked about 802.1x and its components, but 802.1x. 1x on the LAN I think is drastically underused and I deal with organizations that implement this technology totally wrong. So we're going to talk about those as we get deeper into this chapter. Starting out, configuring server-based AAA authorization. So again, authentication versus authorization. Authentication ensures a device or end user is who they claim to be also known as are they legitimate. Authorization either allows or disallows authenticated users access to certain resources. Also important, TACACS separates authentication from authorization. RADIUS does not. We have to understand these, we have to really understand this before we move forward. So make sure you get a good understanding of these concepts before going forward. Command syntax, AAA authorization. We could do network exact commands, you could do a default, you could do a list name, and you can have multiple methods. So if we are doing the exact, you can do a new model, AAA uh, authorization, exact, you can do it either as a word or a default. If you are doing default, you can do it based off of a local database, a Kerberos instance, if authenticated option, or based off of a user group. If you go with the user group option, you can then again specify the server group name or radius or TACX. In the bottom example of AAA authorization, we set up our users, don't have to because we, if we're doing a group that should be pulling from our directory services, but anyways, that's just the example. We set up a new model, we set up a AAA authorization exec, we could do a default permission, we do group based off TAC X, meaning it will only pull information from TAC X, and then you can also do a separate authorization based off of network options for the default group, for the default options for the group TAC X. Again, you can do authorization for network resources, exec resources, or commands. So you can also do a third authorization for command level. Because again, within the Cisco CLI, there is a hierarchy of options based off of your permissions. This is what this area is talking about. I am assuming that you do understand the network options, the exec options, and the command level options. If you don't reach out, I can give you a link to a video where I explain those. Now let's move on to configuring server-based AAA accounting. Again, accounting is the verification, auditing options. AAA accounting, you can also then do accounting based off of network exact or connections. We can get a default or we could do a list name. Start, stop, start only, none. 
we can broadcast, and we can have multiple methods. So if we're doing, for example, our exec, we could do a AAA accounting exec, we can do a word list, or we could do our default. So for our different accounting methods, here we could do a start stop, and this will allow us to broadcast a use for accounting, or we could do groups. Basically, where are you going to send this? Uh, you can collect the data, but where, where are you going to actually send the data? AAA accounting exec. Here we have default, stop, start, stop. We're sending it to a group. We could do a group name or radius or tack x. And then here we actually have an example for our authentication, our authorization, and then we can do our counting. Here we are doing accounting for our exec and network, both starting the start stop options and group tack x. You're going to have a good time in the lab with this section because part of this deals with being able to log and monitor what's happening. Our last major section is that 802.1x authentication. So before I move forward, a lot of users go, well, a lot of network admins go, I need to track what my users are doing, and that's why I prefer wireless. That way I can make everyone sign in, and I can track traffic based off of the account being used. Well, on the LAN, a wired LAN, you can do the same thing. You do that via 802.1x authentication. So in order to gain access to a port, you have to log in just like you would with a wireless that also uses 802.1x, but that's a whole other story. Anywho, let's go ahead and let's talk about the authentication methods. So here we have two physical computers. We have a LAN device and we have some type of a authentication server. So we actually have the computer that can do a request. Here they're doing an EAP OL start requests. The authenticator, the LAN device, should request the identity and a response identity and should, sorry, the LAN device will send the request identity, the end device will send the response identity, the LAN device will do a OTP, and then the device trying to connect will send a response. If the response is correct, then the LAN device will show a, succe uh, a succession and then you're allowed access to that port. So, how much comes from the authenticator, the LAN device, how much comes from the radius or the directory service server? When we're talking about responses and requests, all of those are going to be passed through the RADIUS server in this example. So our access requests, it will respond with an access challenge. Our access request again, dev verify. And then as long as everything is appropriate, the RADIUS server should send an access accept option, which is actually the equivalent of that success before authorization. So several steps, but this is actually the process that the LAN device will communicate with the RADIUS server. And again, notice the protocol, EEPOL versus EEP. EEPOL is just used to start, and then it actually uses EEP the rest of the way through. The command syntax for setting up .1x port control. Authentication, port control, and you have three options. Auto, force authorized, or fourth unauthorized. Auto enables the 802.1 port based authentication and causes the port to begin in the unauthorized state, enabling only EPOL frames to be sent and received through the port. Fourth 
authorize the port will send and receive normal traffic without 802.1x based authentication of the client and this is the, basically the default setting. Basically you can turn port control on and by default it should be forth authorized meaning all traffic is actually authorized unless you want to change it and then that's when you have to talk about securing it that way if you turn it on the ports just don't turn off it actually knows that some users will turn this feature on and they're not sure what they're doing so they still allow traffic to be passed force unauthorized will cause the port to remain in the unauthorized state ignoring all the attempts by the client to authenticate the switch port provide authentication services to the client through the port so notice it will cause the port to remain in an unauthorized state, ignoring all the attempts to authenticate. So, you want to turn off the port. If you're doing port control, if you force unauthorized, it won't actually allow any more connections. So, auto is the option that will actually allow for EAP OL frames to actually respond, so you can actually at least start the authentication portion. How do we configure this? AAA new model, setting up our radius server, you name it, you give it the IP address, you set up the auth and accounting ports, set up the shared password. After that, you set up a AAA authentication, .1x. You can actually do a default option. You can give it a group to connect with. Dot one x system auth control and then you apply it to an interface again this will do no good until you actually apply it to a interface here we have a description a switch port then we have the authentication port control turned on and what feature you want it on here we are turning it on auto this could be auto this could be forced authenticate or force and authenticate but here it's auto and then here we're actually telling it for using the dot one x what protocol to send to the authenticator and that is the end of this chapter so one of the nice things that i wanted to point out play with the labs Honestly, 802.1x is great, and not many network administrators, network engineers, actually fully utilize this technology, and it really is a technology that can set you apart from everyone else. If you have any questions or concerns, please reach out to me. I look forward to working with you in the future. Thank you.